Can we have a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Your eyes are on us. And we are so grateful. Your eyes on our marriages. And it's so precious to you. That very thought is so encouraging and comforting. We pray that you will bless this session and all the time we have together. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so the next topic is the art of communication. And, uh, you know, I would say every session is very important. And uh, this is very special. You know, when we used to do this many years ago, uh, you know, we thought among the ses seven sessions, this is a very light session, you know. Anyway, we are talking, anyway, we are listening. You know, we are constantly communicating. But uh, over the years, we've discovered that this is a very significant session, very significant session. All right, we'll start with. I deliberately chose this picture. You know, Genesis chapter 30, verse 1. This is uh, Rachel and Jacob. God renamed Jacob as Israel. Because he struggled with God and prevailed, the Bible says. Yet when his wife came and asked him for a child, Genesis 31, she said, give me children or I'm going to die. You know, that's what she said. And see what he, Jacob did not know what to do. Sometimes husbands, wives also, we don't know how to respond to our spouses. Truth, right? <laughs> the Bible says... Jacob's anger burnt against Rachel and he said, Am I in the place of God who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? You know, this is the first level of communication. Page 27, you know, passing on information. I call it the factual and the functional. And uh, we people, uh, especially those of us who are in the corporate, we've been working, we've been handling people, teams and all that, so we know how to talk. So when your wife comes up with this, you don't know what to do. And outflows, you know, some sarcasm, you know. Says, that's your problem, not mine, you know. And uh, we say things like, uh, uh, let's face it, it's a fact of life. Actually, we should shut up at that time. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But uh, that's how it is. You know, this is level one. I call it the factual and the functional. Right, level two. That's Isaac. Isaac and Rebecca. They also had the same problem. No children. Rebecca didn't come and ask Isaac, give me, give me a child. But we see Genesis chapter 25 verse 21. Isaac prayed to the Lord on his on behalf of his wife because she was unable to have children. And the Lord answered him and his wife, Rebecca, conceived. This is uh, level two. I would say even level three. But, uh, you know, he was able to talk. He, you know, he was able to feel the feelings. You know, that's level three. Level three is being open about our feelings and our needs. Excuse me. Communication is three levels. The basic level is just passing on information and a lot of families especially the you know uh, what uh, previous generations the husband used to do everything all the talking the wife used to do all the working right food is ready children and everything he she will be a silent listener that's many years back but now today both you know like the previous picture both are able to talk <laughs> but if you are in level 1 that's, uh, you know, very basic level, problem level. Level two is sharing our ideas and opinions. Here, Rebecca and uh, I, uh, Isaac, they did a good job. You know, they were very close, intimate. They were able to share feelings and all that. But, you know, the very next verse, but later they were unable to discuss, uh, the very next verse, it says, 22, Genesis 25, 22, it says, two nations are in your womb. Actually, Rebecca prays to God because there's turmoil in the stomach, you know, Big uh, movement, and she doesn't know what's happening. And when she prays to the Lord, the Lord says, there are two nations, two peoples. And then she, the Lord says, the older will serve the younger. But what happened later in life, this is God's plan. This is God's vision. Rebecca knew it, but Isaac didn't accept it. He wanted only the first son. 
and there was sibling rivalry. So, you know, the second point, sharing our ideas and opinions actually didn't happen in this case, okay? I've taken a negative example. Number three, anybody guess who that is? Yeah, Hannah, Hannah is correct. Hannah is correct. We all know Hannah, but I want to introduce you to the man Elkanah. I tell you, a lot of people don't know Elkanah. Elkanah, he is the first man. You know, if you see, uh, sorry, not Elkanah chapter 1. First Samuel chapter 1, uh, you know, verse 3, it says, he used to take his family to uh, uh, Shiloh every year, all the way to Shiloh. And it says, to worship the Lord of hosts. That's the first time the word Lord of hosts is mentioned. And it's from Elkanah's mouth. And it says, verse 5, um, he loved Hannah because she didn't have a child and uh, every time they went there, they would sacrifice and after sacrifice, he would give a double portion to Hannah. She knew that, you know, this is something that was, you know, she had, uh, didn't have a child and he tried to make her happy. But the one that takes the cake, you know, I call it the third level of communication being open about our feelings and our needs. Penina was uh, having a ministry of provocation, you know. She would come and provocate uh, um, Han Provoc Hannah. What did I say? Provocation. provocation. Ministry of provocation, yes. <laughs> yeah, these are all... Uh, Real-time jokes. <laughs> when we, you know, put a, I put my foot in my mouth very often. And my wife comes and tells me that. <laughs> Thank you. At least I'm taking it out, no. <laughs> Thank you. But the point is, you know, so when uh, Penina provocated, uh, provoked. provoked. Thank you. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so uh, she would cry. She would be weeping. You know, she'd be crying. And uh, see what uh, Elkanah says. He says, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? You know, why is your heart sad? Why is your heart sad? He was able to feel, you know, the communication which allows for, you know, words to express feelings in that, you know, difficult moment. That is the highest level of communication. You know, when you're sad, you can't talk. Actually, Job's friends should not have talked because you're sad. But at that time, if you're able to say something, you know, between husband and wife, you're able to talk, that is, you know, that is the best, highest level of communication. Being able to express your feelings, being able to touch the wife in that point of, you know, uh, sadness. And he says, I like the choice of words. Actually, we need to work on our vocabulary, not like provoke. What is that? Provoke. <laughs> what <is that>? provoke. <laughs> <laughs> but ministry of provocation is there. Uh, right? Provocation is there, but it's not provocation. All right, I'm not teaching that ministry now. <laughs> so you see what he says. He says, am I not better than 10 sons? I'm just trying to imagine his face, you know, what boldness he had. <laughs> Am I not better than 10 sons? <laughs> to be able to say that, you know, and the Bible says, she got up, she went and ate. She got up and she went. You know, if we're able to actually reach that level of communication in our difficult times, in our sad times, even in our angry times, actually these emotions have a high and a low. So, um, you know, at that height of anger, if she's able to say something that makes me laugh, I tell you that is brilliant. Brilliant. So that's why, you know, the skill, actually this is a skill. And uh, we'll look at it. So these are three levels of communication. First one is, you know, just uh, factual and functional, passing on information. Can you give an example? You can use this. Am I not better? <laughs> you are better. <laughs> the ten sons, sure. <laughs> Okay, get back to the point. We're running out of time. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, actually we were doing this session for some leaders in a Christian organization when we were working with Alpha. And at that point of time, <clears throat> when um, we, you know, they were all sitting around, suddenly one girl, she said, now I know. I said, what do you know? Because for me, this art of communication was, you know, like, okay, what do you, what do you tell, talk about communication? And uh, she said, now I know. And she said this. She said, we are three daughters that stayed with me, okay? And she, she said, we are three daughters. And every time my friends in school talk to us about their parents fighting, the three of us would tell our friends in the different grades that we were, sure. we would tell them, our parents never fight. Our parents never fight. But she said, Akka, now, whenever we, we three are married, got our own families, whenever we go back home, we find dad and mom at loggerheads. And she said, now I know what happened. I said, okay, give me your interpretation of what's happened. And she said this. She said, all they did, all their lives, when we were growing up, was factual and functional. Did you get the vegetables? Did you go to work? Did you get the salary? Okay, let's work on the accounts. Factual, we are talking, you know. So we need to understand that's, oh, that is a level of communication. At least, thank God, we're doing that. But that's just one level. That's just the basic level of communication to keep this whole, you know, the operation of the family running, okay? But we, we, when we talk about husband and wife, we talk about a different level altogether. We're talking about going deeper to share our thoughts, share our ideas, share our opinions. Honestly speaking, okay, now we've been married for 35 years. When we took on the Alpha uh, marriage and we were, you know, uh, training pastors and leaders all over the nation, uh, when we were doing these sessions there, at that time, the, for the first time when we did this session on communication, and my husband said, I said, you know what, I've also got opinions. For the first time, my husband realized his wife had opinions. This is after our 25th wedding anniversary, and after we, everybody, even our own kids would say, you guys have a fabulous marriage. And I think that will come in a, in a different, uh, you know, one of the other sessions that will give a, more details on that. But the thing is, you know, to understand that, hey, my spouse has something to say. I don't have to be the one who's right the whole time. And this, this doesn't just apply for, you know, the men and the ladies. It, the reverse, the vice versa also works, okay? We sometimes think only we know what we're saying, especially in terms of the children. We think we are right, you know, we are the absolute authority and we know what's good for them. We might be very intuitive as a mother, but the point is, if we could just allow them to give in their wisdom. You know, I always would tell our kids in their teenage years, I would tell them, listen, I know he's, he might be a little tough in the way he says it to you, but I know there's some truth in it. Let's just dig into the truth and then figure out whether you're going to obey him or not, right? So the kids would, you know, they would come here and they crib, and then I would tell them, no, listen to him. There's something he's trying to tell you, not to snub you. He's not trying to put you down. Those kind of things, you know, if we, we are able to talk ideas, if we are able to talk deeper things, and then, of course, like that beautiful couple said there, if we are able to go into that point of absolute trust with our feelings, I know I won't be mocked at by you if I say this. Then I'll tell you there'll be a lot more liberty in this whole thing of communication in terms of the family. So reaching level three takes vulnerab vulnerability, transparency, and uh, trust. And uh, you know, uh, as we see below, good communication is multi-layered. It's like the sub sandwich. Right? You have words, you have the tone of voice, and the body language. Actually, our words, uh, you know, we need to actually work on our words. Um, Bible says in uh, Psalm 19, you know, who can uh, discern his errors, you know, hidden faults. We, are, we think we know, we are good at our communication, but we need to actually uh, be able to get those gracious words. Gracious words, you know, Psalm, uh, Proverbs 15.4 says, gracious words like a tree of life. Tree of life. But when there's perversity, it crushes the spirit. So words are so important. We need to actually work on our words. Yeah. The second thing is the tone of voice, okay? Uh, you're listening to your spouse and you say, ah, what do you want? Or you're busy digging into some vessel on, you know, on the stuff and then you're saying, yeah, yeah, tell me, I'm listening to you. And, you know, focusing somewhere else. That doesn't help. I think when we're trying to say, what do you want? Or what are you trying to say? Tell me now. We're actually trying to get across. And if we come across in a very reassuring way, that would help a great deal. Okay, I'm listening. Tell me what. 
You know, the best thing I like is this body language. Because my husband, uh, you know, yeah. Um, the last five, six years we're together at home. Yeah. <clears throat> so the last five to six years, there's a lot of, you know, we are constantly with each other. There's another thing couples tell us. They say, see, we are anyway with each other. We are anyway talking. That's not anyway talking. Like he said, intentional. Okay. And uh, so many times when I start speaking to him, my husband very consciously leaves the phone down on a table and then he will talk to me. He will listen to, he'll look up at me and listen to me. I feel that's so important because it makes me feel, okay, I can share anything with him because he wants to listen to what I'm trying to tell him. Okay? That's the body language part of it. All right. So once again, intentional. Intentional. God's given us two ears and... Only one mouth. One mouth. So there's a picture there. Listen more. That's a big one, right? Talk less. That's what James says. James chapter 1 verse 19. He says, be quick to listen. Slow to speak. Slow to get angry. But quick to listen. Right. So I got feedback asking us not to reduce the five-minute session. That itself is a minimum. So we'll not reduce the five-minute conversation. But ten minutes, I think we can reduce to eight, right? We'll try. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Page number 28. Yeah. There's a very interesting thing here. The first part of it, you know, a significant memory. Overall, it says 10 minutes. But when it says significant memory, it says take turns to spend one minute. Good. They're on our side. Okay. One minute telling your spouse about a happy or a significant memory, something that happened before the two of you met. Okay. That's one minute. And then after that, uh, make sure you express what you felt, not just as a narrative. Don't just go in as a narrative, but tell them what you felt at that point of time, which made it so special for you. And then you listen to what your spouse is saying about it. Yeah. So the other person, what he has to do or she has to do is, you have to summarize what the other person said and tell. Right. What so the first person said. yeah. Supposing she is talking, she says something. And while she says something, she has to say how she felt, you know, the emotion part, right? And then I need to summarize it and say that, okay? So that is one exercise. You do that. So you are the speaker, I'm the listener. And, and then I speak only for one minute. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it's my turn to speak, listen, and repeat that. Okay, shall we start?
Okay. We'll move on to the next bit, the importance of talking. See, when, when so many times in, in our generation, I've seen uh, people tell, the mothers tell the boys, boys don't cry. Okay? And then to girls, if they just start, you know, reasoning, they'd say, don't talk back. I've seen so many mothers do that. Now, we come into marriage with this kind of an upbringing sometimes. And so we think, if I talk, then it's talking back. Or if I, you know, let my defenses down, then I'm a weakling. I want us to understand we need to break past that. If we want the intimacy in a marriage relationship to grow, we need to go past what is ingrained in our head. We need to go past that into that place where we feel safe with our spouse. Actually, you know, the most, the safest of relationships as God ordained is the marriage. Is a marriage. So if we understood that this is a safe place for me to say anything without being condemned, without being challenged, without being accused of something. Like remember that white sheet, the one black dot, you know, the tendency to find what you're trying to pinpoint out of me in this whole conversation. Those kind of things are what actually cracks intimacy, cracks up the communication levels. Okay. So we need to really feel free. If, if there are some people who are unable to express themselves, you know, I, I find that even with teenagers, we find that with youth, they're not able to go past. They'll either cry or they'll say, it's okay, I can't talk, nothing. You know, nothing. That's the constant uh, feeling, you know, of it's nothing. I want us to just turn to page number 20, 33. Sorry, not 33. 38. Okay, comes as a part of the next uh, bit. Just before resolving conflict, there are a whole lot of emotions there. Sometime as an individual, just go through it and see what is it that's hindering you from expressing yourself even within your safe circle, you know? And if we go past that, that helps to build a lot of intimacy. Like, you know, they've written it beautifully here. It takes courage and practice to learn how to talk about one's feelings or, you know, how to articulate oneself. And, uh, you know, we, if, we, if I know that he's not going to be, you know, barking back at me or finding mistakes with what I'm saying, then I feel confident to speak what I feel to him. Vice versa, same, same thing with him as well. So, uh, you know, we really need to learn to talk what we feel, what we think to our spouse. We can't be doing that 24 seven. Everyone's working, everyone's got a schedule, everyone's got your own space, but we need to build into that in a relationship. Then it helps a great deal. All right, so we will now go to the next conversation exercise, five minute exercise, page number 29. Barriers to talking. Actually, there's a list of uh, uh, things that are mentioned there. Why a person doesn't talk? Oh, they won't be interested. Why I sh shouldn't talk? I'll be misunderstood, you know? Sometimes you don't talk, you think it's not important. So run through that list, okay? Run through that list and see if some of it is applicable for you. And there may be some things that are not mentioned there. There are other things that you think is an issue that keeps you from talking or stops you from conveying something. So you can mention that down below. Okay, barriers to talking. Five minutes. Right, so I'm sorry, uh, you know, you're having an interesting conversation. We'll have to, and we have to keep, keep <laughs> interrupting, <laughs> yes, but we'll not do it again. We'll try. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, page 30 the importance of listening. If there's one skill, you know, if we learn this skill, I think this is one of the most important skills. Not only, I think this is practice for life, you know. We uh, will be good at work as well. And um, listening, especially if it's listening, listening to your spouse and husband especially. If you cultivate this, this is like a catalyst that will make your wife talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. <laughs> right? Many wives, when they come home, when you come home, you ask anything, you know, what's wrong? They'll say nothing, right? That's going to change it now after this session. <laughs> right. I had a, you know, when I was in college, much before I got married, you know, there was a professor who was doing his PhD 
and uh, he told me this and uh, you know this is something that he uh, experienced he was doing his phd he was teaching in the uh, daytime evening he was doing his uh, research and he would come back late home and his wife told him i have got so many things to tell you recently married okay and uh, he said i will finish my phd in another three, three more months only actually it happened that three more months i will finish this and please i'll come and listen to you and then he said he finished his phd and he said now wife please you know start talking and his wife talked and talked and talked every evening he would talk so then he said you know what he said it in tamil 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 you know what you know what she started talking about she started talking about her second standard in school okay i didn't do that to you okay <laughs> <laughs> not my wife <laughs> but uh, he he had that patience to actually listen so we don't know you know what is in the heart and we need to be able to uh, get that out you know good listeners will be able to get what's in the heart from uh, out of the spouses out of the spouses right so listening has great power to make our husband and wife or wife feel loved and valued uh, that's the exercise that we're going to do t- um, you know page number 30 it's called the power of listening discuss the following questions as a couple number 1 how do you feel when you are listen to how do you feel when you are not listen to also right both and then to whom would you go if you needed a listening ear actually ideal thing should be your spouse but you know there is somebody you know your mentor or somebody and what is it in that person that makes him her good listener right 5 minutes power of listening uh, let's let's start Okay this is an exercise i want you to actually uh, talk to each other how you feel when you listen to how you feel when you're not listen to who is it you go to when you want to say something and what is it that makes that person person so special
Wonderful, wonderful. So, listening has the power to make our spouse feel loved. Listening has that power. So, we need to really hone our skill on this. Right. So, like we had bad habits, uh, you know, uh, that prevent us from talking, there are bad habits that, uh, bad listening habits. All right. Bad listening habits. 31. Number one is disengaging. I call it switch off. <laughs> when your wife comes and talks about money, due, bills, payment, you know, or you're listening but you're thinking about something else. Disengaging. You know, there is, this, is, uh, this is a habit. Actually, these are all bad habits. And over a period of time, because of our culture, because of our upbringing, because of our schooling, we tend to switch off when the spouse is talking about certain things. Her sister, switch off. <laughs> that person, he did this, 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 this. No moment that comes, switch off. So this is actually a bad habit. Okay, this is a bad habit. So, you know, the, it can be because of prejudice, or because of uh, our attitude, or simply because of a lack of interest, you know. Um, there are certain things that she's very interested in that I may not be interested in at all. But, you know, my football, my football team, and, you know, all that may be totally, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't interest her at all. So, you know, how do we actually um, identify that as a bad habit? And overcome, right? Number one. Number two, reassuring. Just imagine, Hannah is crying. Huh? Elkanah comes and says, it's okay. It'll go away. You know, imagine if he says, let's not talk about it. You know, negative confession. So this is something that, you know, we need to be very careful. Reassuring at the wrong time, you know. Well, I mean, we don't need, listening is just to listen, right? And um, we're going to discover, learn this skill. Right? Uh, the third thing is giving advice, you know. I still remember, see, men have this habit. They're managers, managers. So they tend to manage everything. So when you start, <laughs> manage everything. So when you start with a problem, they'll come with a solution. I still remember many, many, many years ago, I just talked to him. I'm crying here about something. I forgot what it was. And he's just going on like, you know, you know what? I said, sweetheart, I don't even want a solution. I only want your shoulder. Just listen. After that, I'll be fine. So he said, really? You don't want to solve it? He said, no, I just want you to listen to me. And believe it or not, I still don't remember what exactly it was. It just solved. It just dissolved. This is not just adults. This is not just a wife. This even happens with teenagers. I don't know why I'm saying this, but if you've got teens at home, please listen to this. I was asked to come into a school uh, immediately after COVID. You know, this, they had online classes and stuff like that. And then finally, the 10th graders in one particular school said, we want to see Dulcy, ma'am. That's it. We just want to see her. So they called me and said, please land up. We, the children want to see you. So I said, okay. So I went up, I went to them, I entered class, and they were cribbing about everything they could crib about. So I said, wait, 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 just give me a minute. So they said, what? I said, sweethearts, do you want me to give you a solution? I'll need to sort this out at a different level. Or do you just want me to listen? Ma'am, just listen to us, ma'am. Once we crib, we'll start studying for the exam. That's all. They just wanted to, they said, we want to vent, okay? And we feel it's safe to vent with you. you it won't go beyond you. I said, okay, now just shoot off. Say whatever you want, okay? I'm with you. I'm listening. So it works at every age level. We need to understand that. We just need to be listened to, okay? So giving advice is not the solution. We're just looking for a shoulder sometimes. Another thing is going off on a tangent. I call that hijacking. You know, you're talking about something and something clicks in the brain there and that next person starts off on a different tangent altogether. A few days back, last week or something, I was talking about something and I just, I just made a statement. And from there, he jumped off to what's, you know, happening across the nation somewhere else and he went on. Da -da -da -da. I said, sweetheart, I am talking here about the servant. How is that connected with... <laughs> 
You get what I'm saying? See, we, we th- we've been married 35 years. The thing is, when you start looking at the lighter side of it, and you're able to free flow with your conversation. So I, when I said that, he said, oh, really? Okay. So I said, you know, he would start saying, this is happening there, and these guys are lying. And, you know, I just said, I don't know whether the sugar level is going lower in the kitchen because of making tea or because it's just walking away. That's all I said. And then he said, you know, those who accuse uh, falsely. <laughs> what will you think? I just looked at him. <laughs> I said, I just came That's out of the, the kitchen. That's the daily news, you know. He is <laughs> listening to news. So he's talking about falsely at a different level altogether, you know. So I said, sweetheart, why is this triggering you somewhere else? I'm saying something simply about the chakra dabba in the kitchen. Full stop, that's all. So sometimes we tend to listen, but the mind is already preoccupied with something. So our mind goes off into some other angle. Coming back to this, yeah? And the fifth one is interrupting. And there are four of us in our family. And you must have realized by now I like talking. Our son is ditto me. He's 35, 34 now. Can't be 35. So he's 34 now. So uh, he, you know, he'll walk into a room and he'll jabber, 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 constantly talking, constantly full of, you know, life. My husband and our daughter are ditto. They can sit perfectly at ease in a room, reading a book each. And now our granddaughter is like that. She brings her story books. She can't even read A, B, C, D. She's just, just turned three and she's not going to school. I mean, she's going to a play school. So she says, Tata, you read your books, I'll read my books. And she narrates the story. You know, she doesn't know how to read A, B, C, D. So she just narrates herself. The thing is, interrupting, what I started saying was this. Our daughter, she... Whenever she, and she's got a very soft voice, when she starts talking, invariably, someone else in the family will start talking something else, and she'll just sit quietly like that. I realized it into her adulthood, only in, you know, when she turned 24, 25, she said, hey guys, someone listen to me, <laughs> you know, that's when she had the courage to even speak up. So then I realize we, we interrupt and then we don't let them finish. So now my son interrupts me and my daughter-in-law says, hey, listen, Jerry, let auntie finish what she started saying, okay? Competition. Yeah, competition now. So the point is this, you know, interrupting doesn't help listening. You know, it doesn't, it comes in the way of listening. So, bad habits. Uh, these bad habits that we've developed over a period of time um, cause the other person to shut down, shut down. We need to develop the skill, knock off these bad habits so that our listening skills are honed, right? So next uh, next uh, exercise, page number 31, uh, please identify your bad habits. Number one, uh, you need to say, okay, you need to say, look, this is my bad habit. Now that doesn't, you know, that doesn't approve. You, your spouse, you say, yes. <laughs> okay? So, uh, re- repeat it. Let the other person say, this is my bad habit. And your spouse says, yes. Now, after you finish this, both are wrong. Please tell what the other person's ha- bad habit is. <laughs> All right? Okay. Five minutes.
all right we come to the last part which is the most important part and in listening we're going to look at what's called reflective listening and uh, there are tools actually people are trained in reflective listening many years ago we i, I used to work with a company called ingersoll ran um, there's a factory here in bangalore and uh, pastor ashish's uh, father his his name was lkr we used to call him lalit recho lkr he taught us the lqr technique lqr <laughs> lkr taught us lqr listen question and restate it says when you go to a hotel you know the waiter listens to your order and you have 14 people and each one you know ask for different numbers different two vadas four idlis one dosa puri upma pongal you know that's a big list big quantities now what does the waiter do he listens and then he repeats okay he asks oh, you wanted idli right you wanted one set or two set oh you wanted idli vada oh in, normally two idli is one vada no you wanted three vadas and two idli okay oh you know you question and then you finished writing all that and what does the waiter say what does the waiter do he restates before going he says 1 2 3 4 is it okay everyone okay okay lqr right that's for the waiter but between husband and wife you know there are five steps we're going to see five steps for reflective listening now it might sound very uh, unnatural okay it might sound very theoretical but i want you just follow this and uh, you know once you start applying actually it becomes a part of it and you know sometimes when you are asking what's the most important thing you know we feel like laughing because we learned it and we are you know asking but that's so important you know so that we don't miss out something that the person is saying we think it's you know uh, we think what we've heard is right but you know the person who's speaking has spoken something else so between husband and wife is very important okay number 1 try to put yourself in the partner's shoes that means uh, the person is talking the person is talking you need to actually empathize empathize meaning put yourself in the person's shoes he is talking she is talking and i am going to talk as if i am listening my wife is talking okay so it's a big job because uh, you know she uh, between us if we say the same thing you no know, i will summarize it and say it in five sentences but she will say the same thing more ex- with more expression with more uh, feeling and with more content you know all that so uh, my job is to actually listen listen without interrupting listen uh, waiting for the person to finish um, and there may be silences now we've got to husband wife very important don't be threatened by silences you'll have to l- sit down and listen as if everything is still happening you know you have to look your eyes eye contact is so important especially when there is silence you have to look like that and see okay you know if you are not talking if you are doing something else you shouldn't say you are not talking no <laughs> so in the conversation the eye contact you know waiting for the person to rush uh, to finish and then you know tell me tell me soon you know <laughs> that's a husband's uh, <laughs> standard thing come on i got to i got to leave you don't know you know so rushing um these are all things that we need, need to avoid so number one put yourself in the person's shoes take time to listen now again we got to between husband and wife we know we need to work out you know just when you're going to office you need you should be careful you don't start a conversation where you want your husband to li- listen so that's that's uh, that's going to come but anyway the point is uh, we're talking about an important conversation that you have to listen to and uh, first step in reflective listening is empathize you know put yourself in the person's shoes and listen right second thing uh, it says acknowledge what they said i tell you a conversation will listen if the other person is silent <laughs> you know she is saying something unless you say wow oh really is it then what happened you know if you don't say that then the conversation actually stops because she is saying something and you're like uh, you know dead wood just you know <laughs> that doesn't help at all so acknowledge what they say okay uh, reflect back and uh, the point is uh, you know if there is something that is a debatable uh, uh, issue uh, by listening you are not saying yes or no to it you know that, that's 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 the core thing 
because uh, in the beginning itself, and this happens very often. So she, she, you know, as she's starting to say something, I will say, you know, but you know, oh, but this, oh, but that, you know. So she will say, L -l -l listen to me, you know, let me finish my conversation. So second part is to acknowledge by, you know, uh, okay, okay, you know, yes, yes. So you are actually saying, you know, uh, responding so that the person can. Okay, that's the second thing. Now, the third thing is, you know, find out what's most important. Now, when my wife go to school, goes to school, there are five things that are on her, you know, when she comes back, she'll report or she says. And, uh, you know, number one is her journey. She drives 24 kilometers to her school and comes back. And there are some places which are, you know, high traffic, heavy, heavy vehicle, uh, you know, movement. So one is the safety. Did he get stuck? Did he get delayed? You know, and that will be the first part. Oh, you know what happened? Then I'll listen to that. Okay, number one. Number two, about the food. You know, like she said, uh, uh, she likes fruits. So, you know, uh, many times she'll come back saying, I f oh, I forgot this. Why didn't you eat that? You know, that's the second part. But the third thing, which is her core activity, she is teaching value education. So I have to remember there are three components. I've become so versatile with that now. <laughs> <laughs> One is the actual delivery, what happened, you know? Then she'll say, this child, you know, that happened. I led this child to the Lord, you know? So that is one you'll have to remember. When, then the other thing is, she is actually preparing, while she's teaching, she's preparing this, uh, uh, these books. So that's the other thing. From time to time, the book has been submitted, published, didn't print this. So you'll have to. So while she's saying all these things, now we'll have to ask, what's the most important thing that you're saying? For her, all five are important. <laughs> But, you know, uh, without, you know, like a parrot saying, what's the most important thing? I've discovered, oh, but what about that? Did the CEO approve it? So, you know, it's putting the question in a thing. That's okay. That is postponed. Not to worry. Now, now, you know, today this happened. That means, okay, that is the most important thing that's on our mind. So, uh, while this is uh, a process, you know, while this is something that we ask, saying, you know, what's, so what's important? You know, uh, that's kind of a prompt to say, oh, oh, no, 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 I forgot. All these things happened. But, you know, the biggest problem today, uh, one, two, three, four, that is the most important thing. Okay, so th this is something when, so reflective listening is actually another, it's actually a skill. To be able to uh, find out what is really the issue, what is really the matter, what is a concern. Because like we said, you know, the one that is, uh, that feeling, that one that is uh, the deep, uh, you know, uh, deepest need, uh, that actually has to be a part of a conversation, right? So this is uh, finding the most important thing, right? Then help help them work out what they might do. So I have to ask her, look, okay, now one of the things that she finds difficult to do is edit online. So I'll have to ask her, shall I take a printout for you? Or, you know, I'll ask her, what shall I do? She'll say, can you take one copy? All 400 pages? <laughs> She'll say, yes. Okay, <laughs> go and take it. You know, it's a project. It's a long time. But what is, what is, what shall I do for you? What is important? You know, and ask your partner. Uh, ask if your partner has said all that she has said. Now, this is especially when uh, you know I, I I keep going on you know trips. Five, last week I was away for five days, six days. So when you come back, there are so many things that are to be said. Right? So many things. And uh, sometimes you write it and keep so that you don't miss out. Sometimes I say, I send a message saying, please remind me uh, about this, you know. So uh, one of the good ways to, uh, you know, uh, in a reflective in a listening is to uh, say, have you said all that you wanted to say? Because now the meeting is going to start. Now so, so is going to come. We've spent so much of time. It, have you finished? No, no, no. I, I forgot to tell you. You know, then we have to listen, right? So the important thing about reflective listening is to number one put yourself empathize and uh, you know then be able to prompt you know uh, prompt in the sense uh, prompt the con uh, so that the conversation continues acknowledge acknowledge then the third thing is you know uh, find out what is this the most important thing most important thing that you're saying and then ask if there's any help that you need in what you're saying and finally say uh, have you said all that you 
wanted to say. I tell you, the wives will be the happiest people if we husbands did this. Right, wives? Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. So we're going to uh, do a bit of reflective uh, listening, okay? Um, we have, we're going to spend 15 minutes, okay? 15 minutes, no, 10 minutes, okay? Uh, take a small issue, take a small issue, okay? Now, um, what Nikki says, uh, Nikki and Sila, okay, they are the founders, they're the creators of this marriage course, and what they're saying is, hold a napkin. <laughs> if you're the one who's speaking, hold the napkin, because otherwise your uh, conversation will get hijacked. You're trying to say something, but by the time you say, the other person starts talking, okay? So right now, you can hold the bottle. If you don't have a napkin, hold the bottle. Hold the bottle, okay? Now, right. So, um, yeah. So uh, talk about an issue, okay? Yeah, talk about what you want to say. Um, um, Okay, one person talking means wives have to talk. <laughs> okay, so wives, please take an issue. Now, please don't bring a problem issue, okay? <laughs> 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 you keep that aside. Uh, something that is not a problem, okay? Something that is, uh, you know, light. You have some suggestions? <laughs> Okay. Now, why we're saying this is we're not laughing at you, but yeah, yeah. It, there are some issues even within us. I can't just talk it in 15 minutes and finish it off and find a solution. It doesn't work that way. So there are some things that will take a longer period. You, you know what are the things that take a longer time for you. So uh, take something else that's very simple, that's very basic. And just one thing I want to add on, uh, when you listen, are you listening to reply or listening to understand. For me, that's a very key thing. As I was teaching young people, it suddenly came up within me and I, uh, they call it my quote. Are you listening to understand or are you listening, listening to answer? That's just beside the point on this whole thing. We'll give you 15 minutes, one person speak, because if we take time for both, then we'll need the 30 minutes. That's the whole idea, yeah? If the other person can... Or definitely bring this up when you have these marriage times over the next few weeks. You can, you know, work out, uh, work it out, and just plan and go one by one. Finish all the exercises to your heart's content. That will really help you uh, get the best out of today's sessions. All right, we'll start now. Wonderful. So we're going to close this session. I hope you're enjoying it. Continuing the conversation is during your date, date time, right? So you have uh, the second date also you've got to fix. <laughs> no, right? You already fixed one. I want to just pray and close. Two verses, you know, life and death are in the power of the tongue. Life and death, yeah? And also like apples of gold in settings of silver. It's a word fitly spoken, you know? So communication is so important. May God give us the grace to, you know, uh, hone our listening skills, build our vocabulary between husband and wife, good vocabulary, Bible vocabulary. You know the way that conversation ended between uh, Elkanah and Hannah? Hannah never spoke in the beginning. But later on we see Hannah kept on talking. She said, no, 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 you go. I'm not coming this year. Next year, no, no, you go. And she said, let the child be weaned. I've dedicated him for the Lord. And then Hannah, uh, Pen um, Elkanah says, very good, you do that. Just let it be according to the word, God's word. Amen. Father, I pray, Master, as we close, we pray our words, the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart will be acceptable in your sight, especially between husband and wife. And Father, hone our listening skills, Lord. Make our ears sensitive, intuitive to pick up in the spirit what our spouse is feeling, not just saying, thinking, and master uh, feeling. In Jesus' name, amen.